My last evening in the Amazon. It's late, but nothing seems to be sleeping. Little things. Big things. Everywhere I look, life stacked on life. I feel so small, a lone heartbeat swallowed by the enormity of it all. Woke up thinking about some of the places I've been, things I've seen. People say I'm lucky. <laughs> Maybe. But I chose to be a traveler, to invest in experiences, not things. Be the first in and the last out. The sweaty, the wet, the soft, and the wild. <laughs> it's so much fun. But this jungle, it's slowing me down and making my mind sweat. Two million square miles of the densest life on Earth. How many human breaths come out of these plants every day? So rich, so fragile. It's like the end never stops beginning. And everywhere I look, I hear stories of its demise. Illegal mining, illegal deforestation, poaching animals. Can I do anything to help protect this place? Forest degradation is speeding up. Deforestation is speeding up. La naturaleza para nosotros es un elemento clave para ordenarnos. Whatever scale of magnitude you're looking at, you're looking at an ecosystem. They kill trees. If you mine in the area, you kill all the, all the, whole, the whole ecosystem. The miners, the people working with wood, they shoot and hunt it for eat it. Nosotros tenemos que interpretar lo que la naturaleza nos ordena a nosotros y no nosotros imponernos a lo que la naturaleza prácticamente te está poniendo en bandeja. Travel has got to be more than a bucket list. the 280 species of trees, and of those, 80 of them have uh, edible fruits. It's like the onus is on us to find ways that people can actually make more money uh, by preserving or restoring the forest than by cutting it down. So we're the ones that have to be creative. Ecotourism, uh, in a selfish way, is like getting to see this place through new eyes every time somebody comes. Can I have some more chocolate? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There are 8,000 hectares of forest at the Ikamusa site, and 22 families that depend on the rubber tapping project. Hola, <laughs> When someone pays for a product made from this rubber, what they're actually doing is buying a store. This rubber creates income that gives communities an incentive to conserve this forest rather than to destroy it because they have limited options to support themselves. It was interesting to see this process going on, where they're not even harming the tree. And then, in the distance, to hear chainsaws going off in the background. They're just chopping down these trees, left and right. And these guys, well, they've become the guardians yeah. of the rainforest. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that by traveling to this community, we can not only help these people to have another income, but we can give them a chance to show what they're doing. 
And that's not just working with rubber, but to demonstrate their pride in keeping these trees alive. If this project were to stop today, there would be nothing. No forest. Maybe a cattle ranch or a papaya plantation. Strip away the noise and it all becomes so clear. Travel is not just about what and how. It should be about why. Entonces ahora vamos a buscar so the community of Boca Pariamano carries these for miles. Come on, I mean, he's done it a few times. From these huge trees, the Brazil nut fruit falls to the ground, and then it's collected. That's how you do it. <laughs> This is the champ right here, world record. Five seconds, 10 cocos. Brazil nut trees can't be harvested. They only flourish in a healthy, wild ecosystem. The income generated from this product helps these people preserve this forest in its natural state. Responsible traveler's presence can give these communities more options to protect their wild places. I don't think I'm alone. We can be the pressure to keep it going. Demand. Supply. I want to be the pulse that helps this forest live, rather than help it die.